Welcome to mask making using paper mache and recycled materials. Now in order to start mask making, you first need to do some research and planning. And this is my final outcome. And it's all done with paper mache and a few other materials. You need to start out with making an armature or skeleton for your mask. I use this little template to give me a basic foundation. Now when cutting through cardboard, you need to make many cuts, one over each other. Think of it like you're sort of chewing. You don't chew through one piece of food in one time. You take small bites. Cardboard is very malleable and I'm able to bend it and shape it so it kind of fits my form. Plus I have these little notches cut out so I can overlap, hot glue and tape them into a more three-dimensional shape. Here are a couple other examples from my students. Next you can add more. I saved up recycled materials for months for my students so they can just look at the shapes and see how they can modify their, their armature to create the three-dimensionality that their mask requires. Therefore, it's important to learn a variety of attachment techniques, like flange attachment. Scoring where you don't cut all the way through the cardboard, but just through the first layer so you can bend it and shape it into different forms. Or layering, where you can add different layers of cardboard or recycled materials on top of each other to create the desired shape you need. I used a lot of tabs and gussets. These are like little walls that you can put on the edges of things to add stability and to attach them onto your armature. I also had all this spare styrofoam, and although you won't see the pretty patterns once I paper mache, it helped create three-dimensionality. I used cups and cardboard to create the horns, and then covered them with some tapes to smooth out the edges. The next step is paper mache. Now you might have some really round objects on your mask, or maybe the whole mask is going to be round, and you can start off by paper mache a balloon rather than doing the cardboard armature. Use either cardstock in a cylinder shape or a small flower pot to hold your balloon in place. Let it dry between layers, but be aware that the balloon may pop or shrink, especially if it's in direct sunlight. Now this is my helper. She helped me apply the paper mache. And it's really important to soak newspaper, newspaper works the best because it's very porous, uh, in the paper mache and add it in single layers over the entire armature. I use the Glutofix 600, it's made in Germany, but you can use any type of paper mache, even homemade paper mache work great. Now, my assistant liked to mix the paper mache with her hands, um, but that's okay. I still was able to work with it, and um, it's a great project to do with kids of all ages. You could add texture with paper mache. You don't have to do it all in flat layers. However, you don't want it to be too thick or else it might have a uh, difficulty drying. I used some recycled paper pulp for some texture above the eyes and then added teeth for details. Sometimes these small details work best after you have your first layer of paper mache on. Don't forget to finish the edges. Wrap the paper mache around the back ends of the cardboard and this will give a very finished touch to your final sculpture. You're going to do at least three layers of paper mache. I chose to do a layer in paper towels to add texture and strength, but you wanna let the layers dry in between. I also went in afterwards and hot glued in with some aluminum foil, some extra teeth. I realized I needed some more teeth. And then I'm ready for my base coat. It's really important to do a base coat because you can cover the newspaper and that newspaper won't show through your final painting. Mm -hmm. 
There are a lot of approaches for painting your sculpture. For me, I wanted to create extra texture. So I added some pumice gel for the smoke and that just mixed with the paint. And then I added the paint in a lot of layers using a variety of dry brush techniques and gel medium to create smooth transitions. Your mask might be different and you might not need to create layers. But for mine, I wanted to have depth and texture. Now I'm approaching the finish line of the project. I, uh, most of the painting's done, but I feel like I still need to do a little bit more. So I went in with a little bit of hot glue in some areas uh, around the mouth and around the eyes and the forehead. And then I went in and I painted the this extra texture. I also added a bit of metallic paint and rubbed it into the crevices so it would have a bit of a shimmery effect. And there you have it. That's the final sculpture. Mm -hmm.